In this problem, we're going to find the arc length of the graph of this function from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. So the formula for the arc length is given by lowercase s, and it's the definite integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus the derivative of y squared and then dx. So we'll start this problem by finding the derivative of y. So y prime. So the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So here it's the natural log of the sine of x. So it's 1 over the sine of x times the derivative of the inside. So we're using the chain rule. The derivative of sine is cosine. So this is equal to cosine over sine, which is cotangent of x. Again, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So here it's just 1 over sine, and then times the derivative of sine, which is cosine. So now we need to look at 1 plus cotangent squared. So 1 plus y prime squared is equal to 1 plus cotangent squared. And we have to um, have some foresight here because we're taking the square root of this and we do have to integrate. So we need to be thinking about identities. So if you don't recall the identity for cotangent, what you can do is you can go to the side and recall the one you probably do know. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So then you can ask, okay, how do you get from this identity to cotangent? Well, cotangent is cosine over sine, so it would make sense to divide everything by sine squared. Because that will create a cotangent. So we end up with 1 plus cotangent squared x equals, and then 1 over sine is cosecant, so this is cosecant squared x. And so that's how we do it. So we're able to derive it even when we don't know it. So this is cosecant squared of x. All right, let's go ahead and go back to our integral. So lowercase s, we're integrating from a to b. So our a is pi over 4, and our b is 3 pi over 4. So pi over 4, and then 3 pi over 4 and it's the square root of, and it's cosecant squared x dx. So this is equal to the definite integral from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. And when you take the square root of cosecant squared, you do get the absolute value of cosecant. Uh, it's because the square root of, say, u squared is the absolute value of u. However, cosecant is 1 over sine, and our bounds are between pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. So if you think about it, on the unit circle, we're here. The sine function is the y-coordinate on the unit circle, so it'll be positive. So because sine is positive between these two angles, cosecant is positive, and so we don't have to worry about the absolute value. Most of the time, you don't have to worry about the absolute value. Most people would just put cosecant and honestly probably not think about it. So it's worth, it's worth thinking about just in case because you never know uh, when it will be negative. If, for example, the bounds were different, uh, say the bounds were you know, down here, then it would be negative and then you would have to do this. right? It would become a negative cosecant. So. Uh, just a subtle, subtle point. So this is equal to, well, this is a formula. So the integral of cosecant is negative ln, absolute value, cosecant x plus cotangent x. And we're going from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. Okay, now we just have to do some evaluation stuff. So let's see. First we plug in 3 pi over 4. So this is negative natural log, absolute value, cosecant of 3 pi over 4 plus 
cotangent of 3 pi over 4. And then minus, but there's already a minus, so it's plus natural log, absolute value, cosecant of pi over 4 plus cotangent of pi over 4. This looks like a real mess, so let's think about it carefully. So let's think about the unit circle. So we know that cosecant is 1 over sine, and so 3 pi over 4 is here. So it's positive, and so we know that the sine of 3 pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. So cosecant is 1 over that, so we basically flip it. So it'll be 2 over square root of 2 because it's 1 over sine. Cotangent of 3 pi over 4, well, cotangent is cosine over sine. At this point here, let me use a different color, cosine is the x-coordinate, so the cosine of 3 pi over 4 will be negative. It'll be negative root 2 over 2. So if you do cosine divided by sine, you do this divided by this, so you get a negative 1. Boom. Plus the natural log. Cosecant of pi over 4, well, is 1 over the sine of pi over 4. Pi over 4 is here in quadrant 1. The sine of pi over 4 is positive because sine is the y-coordinate on the unit circle. So this is the square root of 2 over 2. So we flip it, so it'll be 2 over the square root of 2. Cotangent of pi over 4 is cosine over sine. The cosine of pi over 4 is also the square root of 2 over 2. Remember, cosine is the x-coordinate here on the unit circle. When you divide these, you get 1, so plus 1. And I suppose at this point, uh, we could go to a calculator. You could probably combine these uh, using properties of logs. Um, oh, well, let's go ahead and do it. Why not? Let's, let's go ahead and do the, do the math. So let's see here. Uh, we can write this as follows. ln 2 over square root of 2 plus 1 minus ln 2 over square root of 2 minus 1. So this is ln, absolute value. So the natural log of A minus the natural log of B is equal to the natural log of A over B. So here it'll be 2 over square root of 2 minus 1 over 2 over square root of 2, sorry, plus 1, and then minus 1 here. Um, 2 over the square root of 2 can be simplified. We don't have to do it, but I feel like we've gone this far, so why not? We can rationalize. We can multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. This becomes 2 square root of 2 over 2, which is square root of 2. So you can write your final answer in a really pretty way. So the final answer in exact form would be the natural log of the absolute value of the square root of 2 plus 1 over the square root of 2 minus 1. Really pretty answer. Now, if you want a decimal, let me go ahead and, and type that into uh, my calculator. So let's see, square root of 2, okay, plus 1. And that's being divided by the square root of 2 minus 1. Okay, so if I typed it incorrectly, and I think I did, and I'll check in a minute, uh, I got 1.76. Uh, three if we wanted three decimals. So I typed this in. I'm going to go ahead and type this in as a check just to make sure I typed it in because the calculator I have doesn't have the, um, it's not the nicest uh, screen. So square root of 2 plus 1 and then minus uh, natural log uh, square root of 2 minus 1. Let's see if I get, yep, I got the same answer. So this is correct. So I typed in this and then I also typed in this to make sure they were the same, and that was the case. Wow, over nine minutes, um, kind of a long video. And uh, just to emphasize this here with the absolute value, um, if if this ends up being negative, like if you if you if you get the, you always get this. If cosecant ends up being negative, what you do is when you drop the absolute value, you're supposed to put a negative there. And this is because if you have the absolute value of u it's equal to a piecewise function. It's u if u is positive, and it's negative u if u is negative. So if cosecant is negative, you have to put a negative in front of it to drop the absolute value. So 
kind of a, an odd thing to happen. And it didn't happen in this problem, but just in case. I hope this video has been helpful.